Hello, and welcome back to Introduction to Statistics, specifically for psychologists. Today, we will talk about ANOVA. This is a very peculiar statistical routine, ready to test two effects and their interactions. So it seems quite complicated, yet it's really useful when you want to conclude something like, hey, Chinese, students perform best in the morning, whereas Greeks perform best in the evening, and Hungarians are just somewhere in between. So let's see how ANOVA is done, and what types of ANOVAs uh, will we review here. There are two main types that I want to show you today. <laughs> There's the only uh, types of ANOVA, the one-way, ANOVA and the two-way ANOVA. There's unfortunately no three-way ANOVAs. So first we will deal with the one-way ANOVA, which tests only a single factor, a single grouping variable, or it can also be conditions. Similarly, this should ring a bell, similarly to the independent and paired samples t-tests. So the one-way ANOVA, which is short for analysis of variance will, similarly to these these tests, compare the levels, the means of different groups or conditions. So an overview of these is first the within subjects design, where we have dependent or paired samples, but here it's more than one condition. So there are no pairs, but they're within subjects we call them. For example, the, the different time of the day, if we're doing morning, midday, and uh, evening testing. The between subject design, on the other hand, requires the database to have separate groups. I'm showing it like this because the groups will be beneath, below each other. So for example, the three nationalities, Hungarians, Greeks, and Chinese could be a good example of the between subjects design one way ANOVA. So within or between subjects, let's decide this using a memory database. These are the variables. We have males and females of Greek, Hungarian, and Chinese nationalities performing in the morning, noon, and the evening. And we can also calculate the overall memory performance if needed. Now please stop the video and write down one single research question of your choice. And this is a good database to use it with. So my choice was, does memory performance vary with the time of the day? The cognitive performance was measured in the morning, noon and evening. And let us think about, okay, it's ANOVA, it's one-way ANOVA, but it's a within subjects ANOVA. Why? Because these uh, samples are within subject uh, design samples. This is just a note how this test could be performed in SPSS, just that you have a note I'm not going to talk much about it because I'm not showing SPSS today. What we have to report and understand, although it's important, we will have an F value similarly to the T value of the T test. For the ANOVA, you have F values that tell you whether your test is significant or not, P value, and the means and the standard deviations, or a good graph could picture the results, just like this. And here we can see that the memory performance was quite similar in the different times of the days. Nonetheless, we can see that the level of significance does not reach our threshold, the 0.05. So here we report no significant differences with regards to the time of the day. The degrees of freedom would be important similarly to effect size and observed power if we had a significant result. But here, we conclude that based on the 24 subjects, 
comparing memory performance in the morning, noon and evening using within subjects design ANOVA, we couldn't find any significant differences. Thus, the memory does not seem to vary with the time of the day. Okay, let's see another question. How about nationality? One way ANOVA testing the effect of nationality, which is a between subjects design test because we have groups. Again, how to do it in SPSS if you have the urge, what to report, and let's see our results. Contrary to our previous solution here, now we do have a significant effect of nationality. This is the role you will be looking for always where you have the grouping variable you're testing. Okay, so this F value, this level of significance, and for the degree of freedom, you have first how many groups, minus one, so two comma 21, number of subjects minus three here. This value is the effect size showing you how, um, how big the effect you've just found is. So a uh, 0.35 uh, partial eta squared is a considerable effect. Observed power around 80 is good. We're not going into more details with these tests. They're not compulsory material here. So an example of the conclusion could be that using a between subjects ANOVA, we found a significant effect of nationality because the overall memory performance was different for Chinese, Hungarians, and Greeks. Namely, the eight Chinese participants were the best. The Hungarians and the Greeks were much lower. Mean value uh, and standard deviation goes in brackets. You also have to report the F value and in brackets goes the degree of freedom 2 comma 21. That's what we get from this table. The F value and the P value either as an equal exact uh, number or lower than whatever threshold we set in the beginning. Let's have some of your research questions. And uh, please write down one research question to test here. You could compare males and females, of course, that could have be done with the uh, t-test or any other test. <clears throat> so our next quest is the two-way analysis of variance where we have to test, we want to test, not just a single effect, but mainly the interaction of two different effects. It's very similar to when we did the two by two chi-square test, not to mix you up, but the logic is very similar. Now, when testing two effects simultaneously, we have to acknowledge that either both of them are within subjects design, between subjects design, or they're both. Then we call it a mixed design. Let's see some examples. Is there a difference between memory performance of males and females of the different nationalities? This is a typical two-way ANOVA, where the F, uh, factors, the males and females, or the nationalities are both between subject effects or subject effect, uh, between subject uh, effects. So this is how we would do it in SPSS. This is what we would report. And let's see the result, the most intriguing part. So we tested the main effect of sex and there we see something that we would call a tendency or we can also call it a marginal significant effect because it's just 0 0.05 but it is not significant here we call it significant only if it's lower than 0 0.05 
So looking at the means, it's quite difficult to interpret. I always urge you to look at the graph and ask the program to produce a graph or draw it by yourself. But here you can see that if you just check males and females and kind of average out the points, then you can see that males are better than females in general. But it's not, it's just a tendency. Then we do have a significant main effect of nationalities. Look at this p-value. What can we see? We can see that Chinese are better. Hungarians are Greeks are lower. And we see this beautiful interaction, meaning that it's Chinese males that are the best and Greek females that are the worst. Hungarian males are also quite bad and the rest are just at the same level. So this is what we would conclude in our final conclusion. And it's important that in ANOVA, you can highlight different aspects of what you see on the graph. The bottom line is it should be true. So here we tested 24 subjects with a two-way uh, analysis of variance. And it was a between subjects, ANOVA, with a marginally significant main effect of sex, males being better, a significant main effect of nationality, Chinese were the best, and a significant interaction also occurred between uh, nationality and uh, sex, with Chinese males being the best in this memory task and Greek females the worst. And that's enough. If you don't want to talk about the rest of the, the uh, groups, it's okay. It's sort of highlighting what's most important for you. We also would have to note that look at here, only four subjects are within each tested group. When performing two-way ANOVAs, it's very likely that some of your groups, this is a nice evened out group, though very low in sample size, but sometimes one group would be much uh, higher in sample size and you would have a group with just, let's say, three people in it. That's not very good. At least you have to note uh, that and treat the results with precaution. Okay, another analysis of variance um, test. Is there a difference between memory performance of the three nationalities and the different times of the days? And this should ring a bell because this is what we started with. What kind of ANOVA can you perform here? It's a two-way ANOVA, but which type? a mixed design ANOVA, where one of the factors, the nationalities, is a between subjects design, but you also have a within subjects design effect being tested the times of the days. You report the regular stuff, and here it's beautiful how results play out. You have no main effect of the time of the day. If you wouldn't do an ANOVA, you just tested the time of the day, well, with ANOVA, because there are three uh, groups here, but you wouldn't see any significant differences. However, if you put in nationality as well, you can see what I highlighted in the very beginning, that Greeks perform uh, best in the evening. Yeah, not, no, no surprise there. They do hate to wake up very early in the morning, thus the memory performance is evidently very low there. But Chinese students were the opposite. They perform best in the morning and worst in the evening. For Hungarians, the time of the day did not matter too much. We would report F values and level of significance and collect all our ideas and sample sizes and standard deviations and everything in our big uh, summary. It's also a very nice thing to show your results in a graph and uh, also uh, very uh, effort, very logical to show it on a graph and not have to write it all six parameters.
So this is our last question. How is ANOVA different from a correlation analysis in statistics? Well, there's one major difference here. With correlation, you can conclude a relationship. You cannot say that, for example, age has an effect on memory because it doesn't. You would have to create groups, let's say young, middle-aged and old people, and run an ANOVA in order to be able to say that. So once you do that, you can say, yes, the age has an effect on memory. If you don't do that, if you just use a correlation analysis, all you can conclude is a relationship. And of course, with regression, you can also predict. Thank you for listening.